Hello you lovely people, we are basically now halfway through our Top Dogtober event. That means we've had 15 videos, this is the 15th one. And if you've been coming back every day, you're a complete legend. If you're watching this for the first time, well, lucky you. You've got 14 videos from this month already to catch up on and everything else we've done on this channel. What are we doing? We're doing 11 plus content every single day and as you know if you're an avid listener you may have already signed up we've seen those numbers been ticking over you can go to our website now for an amazing offer for the whole month of october where you can get exclusive premium bite-sized lessons on our website let's see what it looks like shall we well you can go to the website and you've got english verbal reasoning maths everything and those beautiful lessons right there embedded into the website where you can watch you can learn and you'll even get some homeworks to have a go at as well there's homeworks for every single subject you can do them every single week and practice and have a walkthrough and how to answer all of the questions and to do that you just need to go and add it to your basket one whole year of prep resources every single week and if you use my code vote dylan you're going to get 15% off. Not only will you get access to the best resources out there for 11 plus preparation, you get to watch Hayden and I every day. And also, if you use Vote Dylan, not only is it cheaper, you do an extra vote towards me. You can check the community tab, remember, to see how we're getting on there. No spoilers here ever. So you can check that tab out. And I just want to say one thing, guys. If you are enjoying these videos, please do subscribe, please do like, and please do share them with anyone you think will find them useful. They'll always be here. Okay, they'll always be here. So let's take a look at yesterday's lesson. You were given th uh, five, sorry, different words and it was your job to find the odd two out. Let's see what the answer was. It was egg and potato because roast, fry and grill are ways of cooking something. So the odd ones out were B and D. Well done if you put that into the comment section yesterday, you got it right. But we're gonna crack on with today's question type, which is a classic one. It's sequences, and it's our job to try and fill what the gap is right there. Now, number one tip for this one, guys, is to look at one feature at a time. So I'm going to model this first one for you. Firstly, my eye is drawn to the arrow. I can see the arrow is pointing up, then moving across, it's pointing to the right in the right corner. Then it's going down to the bottom right and across to the bottom left. Clearly, this is rotating around. So because I'm isolating one feature at a time, I know this arrow is going to come back up and I'm actually going to use this space to draw it in. You can draw it on your notepad, however you want to do it. So now I know the arrow definitely goes there, one feature at a time. I can get rid of A, I can get rid of B, and I'm left with three options straight away. Cool. Next thing I'm going to think about is the color of the shape. So uh, in the middle, we've got gray, black, and white. And then it seems like the pattern restarts. I've got gray again. So gray, black, white, gray, black so whatever the shape is in here it's going to be black i'm going to get rid of c i can't draw it yet because look at the last thing i'm going to look at now it's always good to look at the two options that are left the only difference is the rotation of the square so let's take a look here we have it pointing up flat pointing up flat so r1 is going to point up just like this we know it's black already so it's going to look something like that always good to draw it out therefore it's not d and the answer is E. So number one tip guys, isolate one feature at a time, work out what the pattern is and draw it in. Just beware though, because it's not always the last one that's missing, sometimes it's in the middle. You can go from the front forwards, you can even go from the back, uh, from the back end and work backwards, it doesn't matter. So how about this one? Something's going on with the squares and the dots, I want you to have a go, I'll explain it after. So like I said, isolate one feature at a time. I'm going to look at the dots first. So in this box, we have one dot. Then we have three dots. Then we don't know. And then in this one, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots. And then finally, we finish with a grand total of nine dots. Now, can you spot that pattern? One, three, mm, seven, nine. They're the odd numbers. They're going up by two each time. So our shape in the middle has to have one, two, three, four, five dots now do we know where those dots go no it's obviously completely random so i will remember that when i'm checking my answer and now i'm going to go and get rid of anything that does not have five dots a has four dots wrong b has five so let's leave that so does c leave that d has four get rid and e has five so those all have five dots they're all possible answers go back now to the sequence and then we're going to look at the squares themselves one two three four five six seven eight squares then we have six squares. I might see the pattern already. Let's just make sure. Blank, 
two, zero. These are the even numbers going down. So this would have to be four squares. Again, we don't know where those squares go, but we know there has to be four of them. B has four, that's our answer. If we're confident we can move on, we can just check to make sure though here. C has got five, E has got three. It was B after all. Look at that. Isolating one feature at a time really helps us to find the answer to the question. Let's do one more together before we move on because with sequences, there are a lot of different types of ways that we can see what's going on. So I want you to have a go at this one for me. Remember, one feature at a time. So my hint is, firstly, work from the back because we've got more in a row to work with. Then my second hint would be do one feature at a time. Have a go at this one. Start with the circle maybe or even the thing in the middle. I don't want to give too much away. You have a go, guys. I'll talk to you after. What is that missing uh, feature in the second box? So the first really obvious one to me is the center. We've got plus sign, minus sign, plus sign, mm, plus sign. Clearly that's a minus sign and we can get rid of E. So now we've done that, super. I'm now going to look at the square. So I'm just going through one at a time. Look at the square here, right hand side, bottom, left hand side, mm, right hand side. It's just rotating around just like that, going into each side in the middle. So right down left, it's obviously going to be up here. And then that means I can get rid of B and I can get rid of D. And again, when there's two left, I always just look at them. Is that black circle going to be at the top or the bottom is basically what we're asking. So now we've got started here, we're gonna go backwards again, top right, left middle, bottom now. So let's think about our kind of square here as a grid. This black circle has gone one, two, three spaces around and it's ended up here. Then it's gone one, two, three spaces around, ended up in the bottom right. So we're gonna go one, to three spaces around, it's gonna end up back at the top. Therefore, the answer is C, and I can draw it in right here, and that's what it will look like. So drawing it in really helps, guys, it's my advice. One feature at a time, draw things in. Work from the front or the back, whichever one suits best. Now you've got all of that help, I want you to have a go at this question for me. Let me know down in the comment section what your answer is and come back tomorrow to find out if you were correct. Guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Halfway through Top Dogtober, let's keep going.